What's going on, you bastards? This is uh, Eric Johnson. I'm RBM, and we have special guest referee Kevin Randleman here. Not Kevin Randleman, like as as in the fighter. Not, you know, just just <laughs> some Randleman. schmo. Just some schmo named Kevin. It'd be awesome yeah. if we had Kevin Randleman. Rest in peace. But yeah, we're opening up uh, this card with uh, Flip Gordon versus Austin Theory. Flip Gordon, he just signed with NXT on the pre-show, and he puts on a great performance against Austin Theory. Got a 60 match, he said? 60, yeah, he yeah, yeah. is. A 60 match, and he, apparently he was off his game. Can you imagine what he could have if he was on his game? Dude, thank goodness we got him. See, that's... This is okay. Yeah. Serena Deeb apparently was the road agent. Interesting. Mm -hmm. And we go, oh my god, this fucking, whoa, holy shit. What uh, does this thing get? Well, as you see here, let's explain it. So Velveteen Dream, you know, he's in the spotlight on his little sofa thing or whatever. Yeah. He's, yeah, like, he's like, the dream has come true. True. Dream has come true. The Velvet Dream has won the NXT title. Uh, and it's all thanks Adam to Cole, my Adam Cole and the rest of the Undisputed Era come out, you know. He's like, you got lucky. But I'm going to tell you what. It's going to be me and you but, one last time. And by the time, because my contract's up in September. So when that's up, I'm going to make sure I'm taking that title with me. So, me and you, one last time before that happens. And, of course, the Velveteen Dream accepts. He's like, well, the Velveteen Dream may be a new champion, but he is a fighting champion. And he's going to make all the fans' dreams come true. When I walk Undisputed Era out of NXT for good. Are you the one that finds it interesting that the photo they use for Adam Cole is the boom part of their entrance? Of course. But no, uh, that segment got 79. Alright. I couldn't I cannot believe that a segment minus Triple H got a 79. It's good. So next match or segment is a match between Brazango and Imperium. Brazango defeats Imperium in 12. 43 when Tyler Breeze pinned Fabian Eichner with a surprise cradle. Now, keep in surprise mind, cradle? Now, keep in mind, Imperium is a tag team champions. I believe. Yes, yeah, so Breezango wants a shot. And it looks like they're going to get it because they defeated the tag champs. And what did the segment get? Got a 51. All right, good match. And it's got a 44, it's not that good. But So, Imperium, they're like, we just, how did we just lose to Breezango? And yeah. why how, how, how did we lose to these Imperium? fucking astronauts? What the fuck? How could we lose to astronauts? That's what we're asking. I'm an astronaut at that. Right. <laughs> Did you change them to astronaut gimmicks? What are you talking? Uh, no, no, they really what? You didn't, what? You didn't know Brizango, Brizango came back as fucking astronaut gimmicks? What? I'm serious. Look it up. Don't look it up on you. Look it up. I don't want to. <laughs> it's a sick entrance. Oh, it's hilarious. It's a sick fucking entrance. They come out in a fucking spaceship. Fucking awesome. Anyway. Candice LeRae defeated Tegan Knox in uh, 9-18 by pinfall of the Moonsault Press. Interesting. Cool. 53. What? Solid, solid, solid. A 65 between Killer Cross and Finn Balor. So Killer Cross, just like Tommaso Ciampa, he just stomps Finn Balor. I mean, he does not care. For 10 right. minutes straight, he's throwing him around. He's choking him. He's he, like Finn Balor. He's on the floor. Killer Cross is just soccer kicking him, stomping on his head. He's like uh, punching him in the back of the head. Yeah, he's soccer kicking his head. That's allowed here in WWE. Yep. So, but no, uh, that's a 65 match. There you go, son. 
Yeah. And a 63 uh, beatdown post match where he looks to life on a Finn Balor. So what happens is, so after the match, Killer Cross is done. Just like the Killer Master Champa, he wants to like brutalize Finn Balor and send a message. So he eventually like hangs him from the ropes, and it's just awful. Even Scarlett Bordeaux's like, okay, Cross, kind of chill, chill, chill a bit. Nah, it's almost like it's almost like Scarlett Bordeaux. Like you could just look at her; it looks like she kind of gets turned on by that. Yeah, well, that's the way I'd look at. It. Yeah, so she's telling them to chill, cause or else she might uh, get too excited. If you know yeah, she might. Yeah, she might cream her panties. But, uh, oh, she's wearing it. Did you see what she's wearing it in your house? Oh, I know. I wish it was in my house, but nonetheless, got a sixty-three. Oh, oh, you mean at the payment? Anyway, Charlotte Flair and Rhea Ripley match. So, so we got a hype package where the commentators say like. Okay, last time, Charlotte Flair, she got herself intentionally disqualified. So we William Regal has decided to uh, this match a no disqualification match tonight. For the women's title. This time, no excuses, no disqualification, no count out. There must be a winner. So what that match get? Or segment ready get? Got a 54, and I put them on screen by accident, so they're just both standing there going, hi. Yeah, so they're kind of just, like, going back, and so they're probably just, like, warming up or something. Okay, how about this? Instead of a graphic, how about just them warming up for their title match tonight? Yeah, Rhea Ripley, she's doing some, she's doing some like, shadow boxing, maybe punching a sandbag. And, and Charlotte away. Flair's just, like, being cocky, just sitting there chilling like the queen. She's got, she's got like, a food, Fiji water. <laughs> yeah, she got like a whole Fiji water. I can see it. She turns it into a uh, Fiji water app, just like they did with like Pro. <laughs> that was the best shit ever. Next, Dominic Dijakovic <laughs> got a fifty-six. Yeah, so a good match. D D Damien. So D seven. Hey, maybe Damien Priest should be like the next big, big heel. Yeah, that's that's maybe where we'll go with this. We'll see. Maybe. Where where we will uh -huh. go with this? Let's see. Uh, fifty-six. No, I know. I'm sorry. Ain't Damian Priest getting called up to? I can't remember. I don't think so. So, uh, Matt Riddle and Timothy Thatcher. Oh, hey, spoilers. Now that they are homies again, and are back together. Kind of like. Did you not hear Timothy Thatcher turn on Matt Riddle? Yes, yeah, but, we did. Yes, but we played it as Timothy Thatcher uh, thought that Matt Riddle couldn't take anything seriously. And so when they traded wins back and forth, Timothy Thatcher has gained respect for Matt Riddle. He's still a bad okay. guy, but he gained respect for him. You see what I'm saying? All right. Like, yes, when it comes down to business, I can trust you by my side. So they're, they're all back together. They're like, oh, the bros are back in town. Then Kyle Riley and Bobby Fish are like, oh. Isn't that cute? Uh -huh. and then, then uh, Matt Riddle does his, like, Bobby Fish could fry fish or something. Remember that whole thing? Uh-huh. Because Matt Riddle's too high to realize what's going on, so he said stupid thing. <laughs> He's too mm -hmm. high to know what the hell's going on. Damien Priest, like, slaps him in the back of the head, but Matt Riddle doesn't know what's going on, so he's like, whoa, what was that? Not a 57. We should we should definitely book a we should sign R V D and have him face Matt Riddle in a uh, marijuana on a pole match. Ah, oh, come on. They just float away. It's just loser uh uh Loser so, they're high, which means they're high. Right, but so Dexter, Dexter Loomis. Yeah, Dexter Loomis paints a picture of who his next victim is. And we don't get the picture isn't completed yet, but, I mean, he's getting close to done, being done. He's like, my masterpiece is almost complete. And once it's complete... He said, will... my master be, my masterpiece is done. And we're like, what the f*** is that supposed to be? Or he doesn't say anything, he just, he just looks and it just says, it's right, like, you see like the picture and then it says, it's done. What the hell is that mean? It just looks like a hairy So that's what I'm thinking. Anyway, 
Pete Dunn defeats uh, Aria Davari by pinfall with a better end. Pete Dunn got a 63. Excellent. That was a 54 match. And then Dexter Loomis uh, attacks Pete Dunn. And, and then, like, yeah. during the beatdown, he's like, you should have seen those signs. I gave you a warning. Pete Dunn's like, how is that painting a warning? Remember, he doesn't He's talk. like, art is subjective. No, he's no, he's trying to... Oh, come on, can you just let me land a joke? All right, go ahead. So, he's like, ah, oh, you should... I gave you a warning with my painting. Pete Dunn's like, how can I tell... How can I tell with that painting? Then he says, like, art is subjective. <laughs> it's subjective, asshole. It could be anything. Dick. But got a 64. It's a, it's a sailboat. What could that mean? <laughs> uh, <laughs> then the main event match just went to shit. What'd it get? A 38. Oh no, what happened? Apparently this type of match is a very poor choice for the audience. How? They love this kind of match. With a soul food? What the fuck? Rhea Ripley wins the NXT Women's World title. So, that happened. Can the can the last segment save us? Yeah, 51, I guess. So, ER was held ER back by the language barrier. Nice. Wait, were you having your talk? It should be. I guess so. I guess she was just yelling at her. Rhea Ripley was like, "What are you saying?" What? She gets sick of it. She's like, she points at the belt. She's like, "That belt, mine." And she's like, oh. <laughs> "That belt, mine." No, but it got a 59 overall rating. All right. Cool. Increased in 33 regions. And this is gonna do it for this episode. So see you all next time, and we don't love you. See you next time.